I think still uh, some of the people have not completed uh, PGBP task two. For uh, any of the tasks which are given to you, you should complete them within 24 hours. That is the maximum time that can be taken, not more than that. And uh, definitely, either those who did not complete or those who completed, in the task two of PGPP, if you have any questions, you can ask now. Okay, I have sent the key already in the group and you can check your answers there. Just uh, quickly going through some of the aspects. <clears throat> I'll respond to that. So this is uh, a typical question where uh, profit and loss account is given and we need to compute the business income. So naturally, the starting point will be net profit as per profit and loss account and various things have to be adjusted. So what are the things to be added here that can be observed? Income tax has to be disallowed because it is not allowed as deduction. Customs duty is allowed as deduction actually, but since it is not paid, it is still outstanding. It is also disallowed under 43B. Any duty tax assess or any other thing that is payable under any law will be allowed as deduction only on actual payment. When you say outstanding, that means payment has not been done. So that is disallowed. Contribution towards unrecognized provident fund is disallowed. Interest on loan. Interest on loan. Why is it disallowed? Because this point is given. Interest on loan is paid to the brother of the SEC for loan taken for payment of income tax, advanced tax, whatever it is. So loan taken for payment of income tax and interest thereon is not. Interest on the loan taken for payment of interest income tax is not allowed as reduction. That is the reason this is also disallowed. Expenditure on the extension of the building shed is a capital expenditure. So that should be disallowed. That is not a revenue expenditure, but it was uh, debited to the PNL account, which was given particularly here. Expenditure on the extension of the said building was 26,000. 
So that is a capital expenditure, hence disallowed. Salary paid to domestic servant is a personal expenditure. It is not a business expenditure, hence that is also disallowed. Section 37 clearly states, no personal expenditure will be allowed as deduction. Any expenditure to be allowed as deduction has to be exclusively for the business purposes or professional purposes. That is one thing. Now, some other things like here, main thing, income taxable but not credited to p is also added. It is not there here on the credit side of the p but it is given in the additional points related to the recovery of bad debts. So, second point is there. During the previous year, long time back, whenever it is, doesn't matter. SSC claimed 45,000 as bad debt, out of which only 35,000 was allowed earlier. And now he recovers 25,000 rupees. So, what are the amount that is recovered? 25,000, if at all. Amount claimed and amount of real bad debts allowed was same, then the entire 25,000 would be taxable. But if it is not same, then the taxable amount will have to be calculated. We discussed that already in section 36, of course though it is part of 41 also, it is already known. This is not something new. 41 also has that, but Can you see this? Can you see this now? Yeah. What is that? Taxable at the time of recovery, how much? It was clearly given how much was taxable at the time of recovery. This is the amount. Amount recovered minus of actual bad debts minus bad debts claimed earlier. So that is the same logic which applies in this particular case also. Here, recovery is 25,000 minus of actual bad debts minus allowed bad debts. 45 minus 35, that is. 10,000. So 25 minus 10,000 is 15,000. That's what is taxable now. And that's what is given as taxable here. That is 15,000. Is that clear now? <clears throat> yeah. So that is a formula to be used. You need to remember that. Amount recovered minus of this thing is in bracket. Minus of actual bad debts minus bad debts claimed as deduction earlier. So that's what is used here. 15,000 is taxable. That is also added here because it was not credited to PNT. Then some more things to be deducted. For example, expenditure allowed but not debited to PNT. So here one of the points was given. Anyway, first two points already taken care of. Third point says contribution towards unrecognized point of provident fund was paid within time. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Even though you paid within time, it is still not allowed as reduction. Uh, legal expenses include 2000 paid for preparation of income tax return. That is okay. What is wrong with that? No problem with that. And uh, undervaluation of stock will come to that. Gift received was given by a supplier for achieving a target sale. That is okay because it is not a personal gift to be taxed under income from other sources. It is uh, for some business only. Achieving target sale is business. 
as a result of that something like a perquisite it is like a money it's not money directly but uh, income received in kind for the purpose of business only so that is taxable under pgbp only so this gift received should not be deducted if you did that that would be wrong and profit on sale of import licenses is also anyway taxable under pgbp only that is one of the things which is there in section 28 itself gift received is also taxable so as far as uh, credit side is concerned there is nothing special to be adjusted uh, customs duty was paid when here it is given 31st december no that is not okay part 3b says you have to pay that within the due date for filing the return of income since uh, this guy is an individual we can easily assume that the due date is 31st july which is much beyond that even if it is a company also still it is much beyond the due date so uh, since the amount of customs duty is not paid within the due date for filing the return of income it is disallowed then during the previous year it came to know that his former employee has embezzled a cash of 5000 rupees on 31st march 2020 which was not accounted for earlier embezzlement happened not in this previous year embezzlement is basically theft for inventory sometimes it is called pilferage usually for cash it is called embezzlement uh, that is a loss it's a business loss it's a genuine loss there is uh, no problem with that so that should have been allowed as deduction but since they did not account for it it was not debited to p and l that's why we need to give it as a deduction so that is reduced from the profits because of that then the adjustment of stock is a simple calculation according to the information given stocks are undervalued what are the stock when no mention is made there particularly closing stock or opening stock we don't know that so when it is just mentioned that stock is undervalued we can safely presume both stocks are undervalued by 10% so these are representing 90% they are undervalued by 10% means these are representing 90% so how much will be the undervaluation <coughs> directly if you want to get what are the stock value into 10 by 90 that's it. simply that can be calculated so 1 by 9 you can count let us say 2 lakhs into 10 by 90 straight away you can calculate you don't have to do double double calculations so 2 lakhs into 10 by 90 means uh, one ninth that comes to around 22222 that is a undervaluation of closing stock how much is the undervaluation of opening stock same thing 1 lakh 20000 1 by 9 so 1 lakh 20000 divided by 9 simply 13333 is the undervaluation of opening stock we can do these things much simply no need of all this uh, double double calculations not required so answer is important so this is the undervaluation and adjustments have to be done undervaluation of closing stock happened means profit was calculated in the pnl account lesser so we should add that so that was added undervaluation of closing stock naturally undervaluation of opening stock will be deducted that's it this is the pgbp finally the business income of this uh, sc so that was question number 1 any questions on that is that clear so the presentation this is the perfect presentation of course heading and particulars note numbers can be also written here as a separate column that's a better way of presenting otherwise you can just write in the bracket also working notes one like that no problem and again number of working notes is uh, to be planned according to the time availability in the exam not necessarily that everything has to be clearly written so naturally in the examinations a doubt comes what note should be written and what note should not be separately written i would say there we have to use some brain and uh, write those notes where we can write a section number as simple as that so when when we can write a section number when we know a section number perfectly which provision is applied for some of some of the items 
there can those uh, can be written as a separate note if it is not possible to quote any section number of your or if you don't uh, exactly remember the phrases of or the wordings of the original provision a better to be silent if you know the treatment that is okay uh, but writing notes is about explaining something so let me be clear on that in the examinations we should explain and tell the value of our knowledge we should not explain him and uh, open up our ignorance we should not explain him and openly tell what is our uh, weak areas so strength has to be exposed and uh, shown off weaknesses have to be hidden that is a basic strategy so that has to be followed while uh, presenting this treatments of course depend upon what uh, memory you have about various provisions as simple as that so that is uh, <clears throat> the first question hope everybody got the correct answers if not remember the provisions once again read them once again and uh, rectify your errors that's it now question number 2 is about again similar uh, but instead of p and l directly the profits are given and various items are given information is given so obviously starting point will be the profit as per the p and l account which is given as 150000 then one by one we need to do the adjustments what are the adjustments to be done here now a question comes can any expenditure be deducted if it is paid on or before due date of filing the return but after completion of previous year i think for this i already gave an answer earlier also similar question has come if you have missed that know it now 43b is not some supreme section that will give deduction for everything that is paid on or before the due date of filing the return of income deductions whether they are given or not are not dependent on 43b they are dependent on the respective provisions imagine if a contribution happened to an unrecognized provident fund but uh, it is paid before the due date for filing the return of income you will not get deduction 43b application itself is not relevant in that case why prima facie that contribution itself is invalid that itself is not allowed under other sections not under 43b so understand this very carefully applying 43b only happens when prima facie that is a deductible expenditure if the expenditure itself is not deductible according to any other provisions 43b will not give some sanctity to any expenditure just because it is paid before the due date of filing the return of income so it is an additional condition for the expenditures where already an expenditure is allowed as deduction under other provisions but 43b puts an additional condition on that what is the additional condition amount has to be paid within the due date for filing the return of income so 43b alone is not the only section which uh, which is uh, driving the entire bgb that that logic itself is wrong See, if that is the case why do we need all other provisions why do we need a separate chapter for bgb any expenditure paid on or before due date is allowed so, you know there is a matter one line would have concluded this chapter but that is not the case we have so many provisions we have so many sections which tell us whether a particular expenditure is deductible or not they have to be applied on top of them 43b has to be applied is that clear <clears throat> yeah so here uh, one by one the points are given in the second question in task 2 and each of them have to be looked at and accordingly the adjustment has to be done so let us look at this first one interest on capital interest on capital for a sole proprietor interest on capital is allowed as deduction for whom for partnership firm now please don't ask me what about companies and all companies will not have interest on capital there are so many shareholders no no company will pay interest on capital to their shareholders that is a separate story that is called dividends which is a share of profits so interest on capital is uh, there even for uh, practical purposes only for sole proprietors partnership aopboi may have that and according to this income tax act 
interest on capital is allowed as deduction only for partnership firms under 40b but sole proprietors it is not allowed why because this is of fictional in nature it's a notional expenditure it is not a real expenditure so once again interest on capital salary to the sole proprietor himself or notional rent of the building owned by the sse in which he is doing his own business or profession all these things are not deductible expenses they have no meaning or no relevance in allowing the deductions those are all disallowed because they are all notional they are not real expenses so simply no one can get a benefit from oneself is the principle we have to apply uh, so if uh, somebody takes uh, some amount from the left pocket to the right pocket that does not become expenditure also that does not become income also so definitely it is not a real expenditure hence it has to be added back so that is added back next second one purchases include goods of 12000 rupees from his younger brother 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 is a related person and in cash that too however market value of such goods is 9000 so the payment happened here purchases for goods of 12000 that is there that is in cash and the market value of the goods is 9000 so 40a2 and 40a3 both will be applicable so first thing first 40a2 has to be applied in the sequence of 40a2 and 40a3 40a2 has to be first applied directly 40a3 cannot be applied so once 40a2 is applied that is 9000 rupees market value but excessive payment made to the extent of 3000 so already once this 3000 is disallowed the amount which is supposed to be the expenditure is only 9000 which is okay because that is not in excess of 10000 that's why there is no separate disallowance that is required under 40a3 just 40a2 disallowance is enough since after 40a2 the amount of expenditure is coming to only 9000 rupees so that is less than 10000 so 40a2 only disallowance applicable in the second point and that's what is given here also so first thing of course is notional there is no possibility of having any transaction with himself unreasonable payment is allowed so since 3000 is allowed but after that allowed expenditure 9000 is not exceeding 10000 so the provision of 483 is not applicable that is a twist point in that second b bit that has to be treated correctly like that anyway interest paid outside india 1 lakh without deducting tds absolutely disallowed completely disallowed so 1 lakh is added back 40 small a applicable there penalty paid to government for non filing of gst return penalty in contravention of law in contravention of law any expenditure is incurred 5000 rupees that is disallowed penalty paid to customer for not fulfilling the order within time 10000 there is no disallowance here so here we don't need to worry about that because there is not a contravention of law it is only that we could not deliver to the customer on time according to the agreement between the customer and ourselves there is a penalty so that is not a contravention of law so that's why so this 10000 is allowed as deduction that should not be disallowed that is a point to be noted important point but it's 1 lakh uh, money has been advanced for purchase of uh, building advanced some advanced whatever it is but ultimately this is 1 lakh rupees disallowed that is not allowed as deduction why because bad debts will be allowed as deduction only when that is related to a revenue which was earlier booked so earlier there should have been a revenue now there should have been a bad debt which is related to that revenue but when money is given just for as a loan to somebody but that person could not pay pay us back so it is not having anything to do with revenue it's actually a, a, a capital transaction loan given and loan not coming back so that cannot be taken as a deduction so that 1 lakh to be added back so it is not allowed as deduction since it is not related to any revenue so that is the f point then g revenue expenditure on promoting family planning among employees 10000 be careful some of you might have given it as deduction no it is not why 
because expenditure from on promotion of family planning is allowable only for companies that was only for companies i don't know why it is not taken here okay maybe the capital expenditure is only for companies that's what is given if it is uh, revenue expenditure okay maybe this logic here in this point is uh, they are giving it under 37 36 wise it is disallowed general expenditure since it is of revenue in nature that too related to the business because this is spent on the employees it was given as deduction that's debatable i would say for application of 36 definitely it is not deductible for individuals so i would suggest this has to be diesel load 37 one logically is okay but again it can be argued that how is it related to the business directly promotion of family planning among employees how can it be called as related to business i don't know so better to add it back so this has to be diesel load i would certainly say add 10000 here also so that the answer will be different then premium paid on the health of the employees in this case 37 is contradictory to 36 is it possible it's not contradictory what is contradictory 36 has told that it is allowable only for companies so that is the reason i told 36 prevails over 37 and one more point to be noted, when we apply 37, I don't agree with this solution because when we apply section 37, first of all, that expenditure should be something which is not covered by any other section. If it is already covered by other sections, 37 cannot be applied. That itself is not correct. So there is there will never be any contradiction between 36 and 37. The, the solution which is mentioned here is uh, thinking wrong interpretation was wrong there so 36 clearly says expenditure on fam promoting family planning among employees is deductible only for companies that was the thing that has to be interpreted like this also that means that expenditure is not available as deduction for other people other than companies but it is not expressly stated in 36 that is the meaning of it. So a liberal interpretation will say, I can apply 37. Again, I'm repeating. I would not support that 37 application here. It is 36, which clearly mentioned about deduction being available only to companies. Since this guy is an individual, so better to disallow such expenditure under 36. 37 will only be applicable for all those things which are not already covered between 30 to 36. So 37 again is not superseding, not conflicting with any other section. That cannot be any conflict between 37 and other sections. Just like 43B cannot have any conflict with any other sections. So there is no conflict like that. So forget about 37, apply 36, diesel all this. That is a better treatment. Premium paid on the health of employees in cash. In cash, if premium is paid, that is disallowed because it has to be paid by modes other than cash. Premium paid on the health of relatives. Forget about check and cash. That itself is not allowed, first of all. This is unnecessary information. That is where the traps will be laid. By check it is paid, it is okay now. No, it is not okay because it is not paid on the health of his employees. It is paid for the health of relatives. It's a personal expenditure. Personal expenditure fully disallowed irrespective of however it is paid. Then employer's contribution to RPF is uh, 12,000. One half of the amount is paid after the due date as per the relevant act, but before 31st March 2021. So this is again allowable as deduction. There is no problem with that. Why? Because since it is paid before the due date for filing the return of income, that is okay. Employer's contribution is allowed as deduction, even if 
it is paid after the due date as per relevant act relevant act means provident fund act but before due date for filing the written of income this is much uh, before even the previous year hence it is uh, allowed as deduction employees contribution to rpf is again a gray area because as per law as per the cbdt circular it should have been first of all treated as income immediately the moment it is collected from the employees that should be treated as income and it will be allowed as deduction only when it is paid within the due date and what is a due date so here for this purpose it is due date as per the relevant act though there was a separate uh, judgment in uh, delhi high court contrary to this but the problem is such judgment is not applicable throughout india so two views can be taken according to the delhi high court judgment there is no problem still this 10000 can be allowed as deduction that is one way of uh, looking at it but we don't know when it was paid it is only mentioned that it is paid after the due date as per the relevant act so looking at the literature of the point half of the amount since it is paid after the due date as per the relevant act according to the cbdt circular it should it shall be disallowed so cbdt circular says it has to be paid within the due date as per relevant act delhi high court says who are you to say that if they pay even before the due date for filing the return of income also it is okay so there is a contradiction there that is the reality in reality everything will not be black and white we have to take a take a call there either way it's okay uh, but anyway cbdt of course is now giving that clarification since uh, particularly employees contribution we can apply that logic where if it is not paid within the due date as per the relevant act it can be disallowed so half of that means 5000 can be disallowed again if it is allowed you should write a note stating that according to delhi high court judgment this treatment has been done that was uh, point number k point number l interest on late payment of professional tax that is uh, 1000 that is interest it's not a penalty so there is no problem if it is a penalty it is different there is interest There is no problem on that. Then interest on loan taken from SBI, ten thousand out of which five thousand is not paid yet. We know that Part Three B clearly says amount payable to the banks, including state financial corporations, any other things like <coughs> industrial corporations, etc. They all have to be paid before the due date for filing the return of income. Five thousand, since it is not paid before the due date for filing the return of income, it is disallowed according to Part Three B. next interest on late refund from the income tax department is 500 rupees interest on late refund interest on refund from the income tax department first of all you should read it carefully is it expenditure or income this 500 interest on refund from the income tax department that is not expenditure that is income but question comes is it a a uh, business income or something else that has to be noted definitely it is not a business income so that has to be reduced here less that is because it is not taxable under pgvp it will be taxable under other head which is income from other sources now some people may think are earlier you said return refund of income tax is not at all taxable now you are telling it is taxable under income from other sources no sir remember that carefully what we were talking earlier and what we are talking now we are not talking about refund of income tax no we are talking about interest on the refund of income tax refund of income tax is not at all taxable anywhere wherever it is not taxable but interest on the refund of income tax because the refund happens lately usually that happens every return refund happens after some time and every refund will have some component of interest that will be taxable but not under pgvp that will be taxable under income from other sources so it has to be reduced here from the profit as per pnl then the next point says sale includes uh, sale to raj 10000 rupees uh, cost of such goods is uh, 8000 the market value of such goods is 12000 and uh, cost doesn't matter it is sale and uh, which is uh, 10000 to raj there is no point in in this i don't see any problem with that nothing 
is wrong. Oh, sorry. Raj means the SEC, huh? <laughs> I thought somebody else. So this guy is selling goods to himself and calling it as income, whatever it is. So it includes a sale to Raj means himself. So cost of that goods is 8,000. In other words, basically it is not a sale. It is basically drawings in the form of goods normally. So ideally, I mean, for accounting purposes, ideally the entry should have been, should have been this 10,000 rupees is not relevant then. 8,000 rupees is the cost of the goods. So there the entry should have been drawings account at order to purchase. Rather, what uh, he has done probably is either drawings account at order to sale or Raj account at order to sale. Like as if it is sold to somebody else, he has recorded that. So that 10,000 rupees. In that, this 8,000 rupees is the component of the cost, which cannot be treated as this uh, sale. So what is the cost of the goods sold to himself? That is uh, 8,000 and sale itself is 10,000. So first of all, you can reduce this uh, 10,000, which is credited to pay unnecessarily. So deduct it. Then this 8,000 would have been there on the debit side as part of the purchases. So that has to be added up. So effective is what? Whatever the profit he has shown in this 2000, we don't need to do both of them also. 2000 is the profit that he is showing in his PNL as if he made from himself. That is a notional profit. Anything notional cannot be either taxable or deductible. So this is notional profit. Since this is notional, simply, ideally, it can be just reduced. That is enough. No need to do plus and minus. Straight away, the component of notional profit 2000 can be reduced. That is point number O. Then he received 80,000 rupees. Uh, there is another uh, question in the task, uh, sorry, this chat box. Uh, if goods are sold to someone else uh, much below the market price, is there no treatment for it? Uh, like, won't we add back the difference? No, we don't. There is no provision for that. So even if goods are sold to someone else below the market price, that doesn't matter. It was not there on the income side, only for expenditure side, 40 year two was there. If any excessive expenditure is spent towards a related person, that excessive expenditure shall be disallowed. If uh, sales are recorded below the market price, as far as normal revenue is concerned, there is no provision which uh, particularly says that difference has to be treated as income. So it doesn't matter even if somebody sells the goods at a price below the market price. That is his problem. No? What income tax department has to do with that? If he wants to sell at a very lower price, a lot of times people sell that also, clearance sale and all they will do. They will sell at a very highly discounted prices. So who is income tax department or the law to interfere in that and say, I will make it taxable on the income which you did not make. <laughs> that is the beauty. No? Well, if that has to be applied, what are you saying? Income tax has to, income tax department has to tax the income which the SSC did not earn. How can it be? That itself is not uh, fair. So, no problem. When somebody sells anything, means basically the goods and services at a price, below the market price, as far as normal things are concerned. Capital assets, it is different. We'll come to that later. That is in the capital gains. Same logic, in case of capital assets, that will change. But for normal goods and services, there is no such provision. Clear? So here, he received 80,000 rupees from a debtor at a time in cash. So what? Generally, it should not have an issue. He received some money. What is the big deal in that? Nothing happens with that. Whether it is received in cash or whatever also, that doesn't make any difference. So that's P is just a eyewash, just unnecessary point. 
<coughs> recovery of bad debts 10000 rupees out of which 8000 was allowed as deduction earlier so how much will be taxable now so only 8000 will be taxable naturally so whatever is that uh, recovery of bad debts so how much was allowed as deduction earlier is uh, 8000 recovery happened 10000 actual bad debts so 10000 minus of Actual bad debts minus allowed bad debts. Allowed as deduction earlier. So, how much will be taxable now? Taxable amount will be only 8,000. So, which is there already in the included in the PNL account credit side, maybe. So, already 10,000 is included in the PNL. But how much is supposed to be taxable is only 8,000. That means how much has to be reduced from the income, 2000. So that is the less side reduction already because all these things which are given in the points are already part of the PNL. So this uh, 10,000 would have been already credited to the PNL. Ideally, how much taxable? Only 8,000 is taxable. So this is the formula once again. 8,000 is taxable means 10,000 credited to PNL means 2000 has to be reduced from that. So that is this point. Uh, that's all. And uh, anything else? Depreciation. Yeah. Depreciation being not debited in accounts, 20,000 rupees allowed as deduction. So since it is not already debited in accounts, that has to be also reduced. We don't need to show all these less things separately, separately. Not, not required. Don't go with that unnecessary presentation. Simply net profit as per PNL account, add less. That's all. We don't need to segregate them into four different categories, blah, 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 with headings and all. Not required. That much time will not be available. So whatever the items to be added, write the description very clearly, that is enough. And write the reason very clearly in the notes, if time permits, that is enough. And of course, refer to the section number, wherever you remember. It. Then that is enough. So no need to less because of this, less because of this, add because of that, not required all of that. So just headings not required. Uh, penalty for breach of uh, duty shall be allowed a deduction, then why not subtracted? Which point you are talking? Penalty for duty? Duty. What is duty? This is E point is penalty paid to customer for not fulfilling of order within time. Where is duty in that? We are talking about English language duty, responsibility, liability. breach of obligation, breach of our uh, commitment. That is not violation of law. That is not violation of law. Breach of obligation is part of the business. In businesses, nobody can 100% uh, deliver everything that has been promised all the times 100%, not possible. So breach of obligation, breach of uh, responsibility or breach of commitment, whatever you call it, is part of the business. So. Any penalty paid because of that is a genuine business expenditure, hence it is allowed as reduction. So in contravention of law, if any penalty has been paid, that only is dissolved. That was very clear. Is that clear? Now you cannot say it is breach of contract act uh, 1872 and all that. <laughs> no. If we go into that level, Every act of every person is contravention of some other law. Uh, that, that logic, at least commonly, we have to understand, uh, particularly in Indian context. Uh, maybe, I told earlier also, just for general knowledge, not related to income tax. In real life, there is none of us, none of us, who has not violated any law. So there will be some law. We don't know that also, that law exists. There must be some violation that all of us would have done already, or we are doing right now also. That also we don't know. So violation of law is a very broader word. We, we cannot uh, bring it up on everything like normally that happens in business. Uh, that cannot be uh, looked at like that. Okay, So small, small things, normal things are uh, commonly allowed as deduction. 
of course that can be a litigation matter now like just for imagining imagination purposes let us say there is a you know say shopping center or a, a cloth store something like uh, rs brothers or uh, chennai shopping mall something like that in front of that uh, shopping uh, center a lot of bikes and cars were parked and uh, because that shopping center didn't want their customers to be harassed by the traffic police it has uh, asked the traffic police to send uh, challans to the shopping mall itself for the parking of vehicles at no parking sign and the traffic center paid that fine on behalf of the customers question comes whether that will be allowed as deduction or not no okay someone says no someone says yes so that is what is lie about if everybody says only one thing we don't need courts we don't need judges we don't need all this judiciary system and all that so it depends we don't know whether it is allowed as deduction or not if the income tax officer contends that it is not allowed as deduction he is also right in his point of view if the sc goes to the court the court also agrees with income tax department then fine if not maybe it can be treated as part of the business expenditure because though the penalty happened in contravention of law actually the business did not contravene the law the lawyer of that uh, rs brothers can argue that we did not contravene the law our customers contravened the law and uh, we paid to the customers because we want to not have any bad taste to, to our customers for this parking so we want to have our business interests to be protected uh, we don't want our customers to be harassed with that so we are actually paying on behalf of customers as a goodwill gesture it is as good as going to a shop and that that shop person will give some cold drink or something like that like that this this shop might give uh, parking fines directly that may be an offer so imaginary thing nobody does that so point is like that anything can happen like that so many things can happen if you really go to the actual aspects of contravention of law in a very strict manner again everything will be in contravention of law only that will be dangerous interpretation of that so don't get into that much strict interpretation as far as that uh, penalty things are concerned so penalty things are only possible to be disallowed when that penalty is paid because of any contravention of law which is in force that is the overall uh, provision uh, but usually that does not mean every thing will be coming under the purview of that so here in point number e penalty paid to the customer it is not paid to government that is the point here the penalty here is paid to customer so where is the law coming in this no law coming in this it is basically some agreement between two parties one party could not deliver so he paid penalty as simple as that so there is no law that is being implemented here or some case that happened here nothing happened there so this penalty is not in because of the contravention of law it is because of non fulfilling non fulfilling of the order in time so it can be allowed as deduction that's it anyway so that is the answer finally of course 360500 is the answer that is given so ideally it should be 3 lakh 70500 if we disallow this uh, 10000 rupees family planning expenditure on employees if we disallow that that will be also added back so the correct answer i would say is 3 lakh 70500 done any questions on that question number 2 so question number 2 is clear question number 3 and other things actually remaining questions are uh, uh, straight forward and simple questions mostly 
understanding the allowability or otherwise of some of things. So question number three says, uh, discuss the admissibility or otherwise of the following items in computation of income under PGBP for the assessment year 21-22. So here, a machine worth 45,000 was purchased for scientific research related to the business carried on by the SEC. Of course, if it is an approved scientific research and all that, definitely it can be allowed as deduction. So capital expenditure is allowed as reduction under section 35. That's enough. Then a cash payment of 30,000 made to a creditor who refused to accept a check. Whatever it is, he refused it means we cannot say, okay, sir, okay, sir, I will pay 30,000. Doesn't matter. Law is not about that. Law says cash payment cannot be made to one person on one day more than 10,000 rupees. It should be disallowed under 40A3 completely. He refused. So what we can do? 40A3 is applicable. When it is applicable, it is applicable. So second point, 40A3 would be definitely applicable. Penalty of 5,000 rupees paid to customs authority in violation. Clearly disallowed. Any penalty here is definitely disallowed under section 37. Brokerage of 10,000 paid for raising a loan for the purpose of business. We discussed this also. Brokerage commission for arrangement fees for raising the loan is treated as good as interest on the loan. Hence, it will be allowed as deduction. So 10,000 rupees definitely will be allowable expenditure as part of normal thing. Of course, that is part of like any other interest expenditure, similar to that. Then the point number five, 15,000 paid to an income tax advisor for conducting appeal before the income tax appellate tribunal. No problem. Definitely it is allowed as reduction, whatever it is. Even the expenditure incurred for filing a case against the income tax department also is allowed as reduction. So these are the various aspects in question number three. Then question number four is the uh, application of uh, 40B once again. Uh, so we need to definitely compute the book profits first. Then we need to apply the normal computation of PGBP also, because the question is, what is the, the total income of this firm? Firm's uh, total income has been asked. So book profit, first of all, if we calculate from the information that is given. So net profit as per the profit and loss account is uh, 24,000, put together 12 plus 12. Then various things here on the face of it, if there are any, let us just look at them. First of all, this bank interest that is 14,000 to be reduced. Why? Because it is to be taxable under income from other sources. Then on the debit side, salaries, depreciation, office expenses, rent, these are okay. But provision for bad debts on the face of it clearly disallowed. Provision for bad debts cannot be allowed as deduction. That has to be added back. Salaries to the partners is to be added back first to find out book profits. So that is 1,26,000. And interest on capital to the, see salaries to the partners includes this commission also. So here uh, salary name is not to be just taken. All of them have to be taken. So commission to the partner also to be added back. Whatever the name it is called, it has to be first added back. It is all falling under the word remuneration to the partner, whether it is called salary or commission, that doesn't matter. Interest on capital is given at the rate of 20% per annum. So 15,000 rupees, let us say, it is representing 20, but law allows only 12%. So how much will be taxable, taxable amount or disallowed amount, not, not taxable, sorry. So 15,000 rupees is representing 20. How much is disallowed? That is 6,000 rupees to be added back. That is disallowed under 40B. Next, further information is given. Office expenditure includes penalty to customs 5,000, should be added back. And other things like depreciation as per income tax rules is 17,000. But how much was debited here earlier? 20,000. But you, you do the treatment in the exams consistently, add 20,000, deduct 17,000, net effect is deduct 3,000. That's what it is. So all these adjustments, once we do, we have this uh, book profit that is 1 lakh. 64,000. That tells us how much remuneration is possible to be paid to the partners. So clearly, according to the law, 90% of this 1,64,000 or 1,50,000 rupees, whichever is higher. 90% of 1,64,000 will be only 147,600. Since 1,50,000 is higher than that, it is allowed as deduction. Uh, but how much is there here? Total put together debited to the PNL 
one lakh thirty five thousand. I told already this commission also is part of the salary. So one lakh thirty five thousand, which is okay. There is no problem there. So definitely that one lakh thirty five thousand, whatever I was earlier debited, now allowed as deduction also. So the PGBP of the form is twenty nine thousand. That is the answer. And of course, the question was asking not only PGBP, it was asking total income of the firm. Okay, just for a general thing, bank interest is taxable under income from other sources. So that is gross total income forty three thousand. Since no information is about any deductions here, total income also is forty three thousand. That's all. so. That is the solution for question number four. And just for uh, understanding purposes. now if at all the question also asks what about the treatment in the hands of partners partners now there are many things here first let me ask one by one this 12000 and 12000 share of profit for the partners a b i am asking at least some of you should answer first thing first share of profit Twelve thousand, twelve thousand. Question: Taxable, not taxable. Treat as inward. Try to the full words, boss. I don't know what is inward. Income. One by one. I, my my question is simple. Don't create new things. My question: Twelve thousand rupees share of profit received by the partners from the partnership firm. Twelve thousand, twelve thousand taxable or not taxable is the question. Somebody says taxable. Somebody says not taxable. Okay. Not taxable. Not taxable. Not taxable. Okay, good. Lot of uh, correct response. So many correct responses are there. Not taxable. Not taxable. We discussed this earlier also. Share of profit received by the partner from the partnership firm was not taxable. Why is that? Already it is taxed in the hands of partnership firm. again it will not be taxed and it is exempt also particularly so this share of profit not taxable not taxable that is one point now the question second one interest on capital interest on capital a and b interest on capital a and b partners received it right for the firm it was a expenditure for the partners it would be income question taxable not taxable 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 not taxable 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 hmm so people are uh, misinterpreting things here they are telling up to 12% it is not taxable up to 12% it is taxable that 12% was not for the partners sir that 12% was restriction for the partnership firm who said anything there for the partners for the partners nothing was specifically mentioned we have to use common sense in that case since there is no particular provision about partners this is common sense enough since it is already taxed in the hands of partnership no taxability for partners here how much ever is given as a deduction for the partnership firm under 40b that much only should be taxable for partners right imagine if some amount is disallowed disallowed amount for the firm already a punishment was given to the firm in the form of disallowance under 40b how can you again make another punishment for the partner in the form of making it taxable it doesn't make sense and not fair so what will be the amount that is taxable in the hands of partners simple logic whatever the amount was allowed as deduction for partnership firm so how much was the amount allowed as deduction for the partnership firm that has to be calculated here we have calculated how much amount was not allowed 
So for example, in this case, we have to calculate 8,000, 7,000 was the interest at a rate of 20%. How much was allowed as per the law? 12%. So 4,800 would have been, would have been allowed for partnership firm, firm. Same way, 7,000 by 20 into 12. 4,200 would have been the amount of deduction that is available for the partnership firm. This is the amount which are allowed as deduction for the partnership firm. So which were allowed as deduction here as an expenditure for the other party who is receiving, that becomes income. So now how much interest will be taxable in the hands of the partners? That is 4,800, 4,200. That is the answer. How much our amount is allowed as deduction for partnership firm, same amount will be taxable in the hands of partners. So the disallowed amount of expenditure for partnership firm cannot be taxable in the hands of partners. That will be unfair. So that is a logic for interest on capital. Now another question is not over. A received 54,000 rupees salary. B received put together 72 plus 9,000 means 81,000 rupees salary plus commission. Question, are they taxable in the hands of the partners, partners A and B, 54 and 81? Salary or remuneration to partners, let us call it. How much taxable? Are they taxable, first of all, in the hands of partners? Yes or no? Answers. Are they taxable? Yes. Yes, they are taxable. Again, logic is same. How much will be taxable? Yeah, taxable up to the amount. Somebody says not allowed as deduction. No, no, no. Write your words carefully. Taxable up to the amount allowed as deduction, not, not allowed as deduction. Allowed as deduction. So how much was allowed as deduction? Actually, full amount was allowed as deduction, right? If there was a disallowance, then we would have calculated how much is taxable for partners. Here, full amount was allowed as deduction. So what are the amount allowed as deduction? Enter amount is taxable in the hands of the partners. So 54,000, 81,000 also taxable in the hands of the partners fully because full deduction was claimed by the partnership firm under 40B. If there was a disallowance, to that extent, it would not have been taxable in the hands of partners. That is about other side of the story. If it is asked, that also we should know. Now, another question. Okay, fine, sir. The salary to partners is allowed as deduction for the partnership firm, and the same was taxable in the hands of partners. That is all okay. This is the amount we are talking, 54,000 and 81,000 taxable in the hands of the partners that is okay next question under which head for partners salary received by the partner from the partnership firm is taxable under which head for the partners SSC is partner now under which head the remuneration salary whatever received by the partners is taxable head of income i'm asking Somebody says salaries. Somebody says PGBP. PGBP. More responses required. Hmm. Hmm. Mixed response. Few are sell telling salaries. More are telling PGBP. So those who are telling that it is taxable under salaries, you are wrong. It is taxable under PGBP. It is taxable under PGBP. If you remember that, we discussed that in the chapter of salaries already. It comes under the exception to the salaries chapter. There itself we have discussed in the salaries chapter, any salary, commission, remuneration by whatever name, whatsoever name called, received by a partner from the partnership firm shall be taxable under the head of PGBP, but not under the head of salaries. So this 54,000 and 81,000 also shall be taxable in the hands of partners under the head of PGBP.
So these are the points on the other side also to be noted. Share of profit, completely not taxable. Interest and salaries are remuneration, taxable to the extent which are allowed as deduction for the partnership firm and salary or remuneration received by the partner from the partnership firm is taxable under the head of PGP. That's it. That was uh, question number five. Sorry, four. And now, question number five is a straightforward thing. The debit side of PNL account of my uncle limited shows the following expenses which have been due but are outstanding at the end of the previous year. And uh, amount paid when it is paid and uh, first payment, second payment amounts are given. So this 15,000 according to what is this amount? Leave and cashment expenditure, 43B applicable. How much will be allowed now for this uh, um, previous year? That will be only 15,000. After that, 50,000 will be allowable for the next year. So answers will be like this. 15,000 for the current year, assessment year 21, 22, 50,000. Next year, it will be allowed later also. 43B is applicable here. Then interest payable to bank, same logic. 3,000 now, 11,000 later. Then bonus payable to the employees. That is the entire amount because the due date for filing the written of income is 30th September and amount paid is 30th September. So total amount 87,000 will be allowed as deduction now itself. <coughs> no need to dissolve anything. Then interest payable on LIC loan that was given here 50,000 that will be allowed as deduction now and later. Yeah, 25,000 will be allowed as reduction in the next year. That is 22, 23 assessment year. That's it. That is about question number five. Question number six also is a, a straightforward question, which is related to electricity companies where uh, they are charging depreciation on straight line method and the actual cost was 20 lakhs. Written down value was 18,72,300. Sold the said asset during the year after whatever number of years. Uh, already written down value is given. So we don't need to worry about the depreciation. Already how much provided and all. So what will be the tax treatment if that is sold for 30,000? So 18,72,300 minus 30,000 is a loss that will be treated as terminal depreciation. How much is that? That is 18,42,300. That's all. Terminal depreciation will come. Then 18,72,300 exactly if it is sold for no profit, no loss, nothing, no treatment required. That's it. But of course, depreciation will not be claimed on that anymore because already as it is sold. And by the way, for electric companies which are claiming depreciation on straight line method, we have to also remember the, the depreciation is not calculated on the block of assets basis. It is calculated on asset by asset basis. Once the asset is sold, no more depreciation. Then 19,80,000. So here 19,80,000. Minus 18,72,300 will be 1,7,700. So what is that called as? That is called balancing charge. And that balancing charge will be taxable under the head of PGB. 1,7,700. Then 21 lakhs. <coughs> 21 lakhs. In this case, first thing first directly, 1 lakh is capital gain. Because... 21 lakhs minus 20 lakhs. Over and above the cost of the asset, whatever it is, that is capital gain. And how much is the difference between 20 lakhs and 18 lakhs, 72,300? In other words, how much our amount was already charged as depreciation earlier? In other words, how much our amount was already allowed as deduction earlier? Now, since that situation has reversed, it should be taxable. And that amount is 1 lakh 27,700. So this is capital gains, short term capital gains. And this is balancing charge that's it that was uh, question number six of course in all cases no more depreciation will be there then question number seven uh, is a straightforward question and eight also straightforward bits only you can just go through the key nothing special to explain about them so that was uh, task number two the first two questions in this are very important. Those are the important in the sense they cover a lot of aspects and those aspects have to be definitely 
observed and uh, carefully applied. Now, going back to what we did earlier in uh, the earlier session, in this uh, third series of problems, so question number one, I think we have done already. Two, also, I think we did in the earlier session. Three also we have done. But four, I asked you to do. Tell me the answer now, please. Question number four. I asked you to do. I'm not getting any consistent answers. Different, different answers are coming. Go. Oh, another different answer. Another different answer. But a lot of people have said uh, 1 crore 7 lakh 10,000 looks like a repeatedly. 1 crore 7 lakh 10,000. 1 crore 7 lakh 10,000. That does not mean many people got it. means it is correct. Okay, let's check that. What else we can do? We will we'll check that quickly. Oh, there is nothing else here. Only question number four has a... <clears throat> this P&L account, and we just have to do some plus minus things here. So how much is the profit as per P&L account? One crore, four lakhs. That is a profit as per P&L account. From the face of the P&L, what are the variety items? Let us look at them. Sales is okay. Closing stock okay. Bank interest is not okay because it is taxable under income from other sources. Deduct. LTC John shares is not okay. It is also taxable in another head of income. So deduct. On the debit side, opening stock, fine. Purchases, fine. Contribution to scientific research, fine. Assuming it should be approved research. GST, generally fine. Depreciation, let us add back. We'll see how much depreciation is uh, available under income tax act later. Preliminary expenditure, 2 lakhs. Preliminary expenditure incurred 2 lakhs. You don't get a deduction for 2 lakhs. We know that 35D gives only one fifth of that expenditure will be allowed as deduction. So 2 lakhs, if it is debited to PNL, one fifth only will be allowed as deduction, which means 40,000 is allowed as deduction, which means how much is disallowed here? 1 lakh 60,000 is disallowed. So that is the point here. 1,60,000 to be added back for preliminary expenditure. Depreciation also we added back. Penalty for violation of law, whatever it is, 20,000 definitely to be disallowed. So add back. Income tax, wealth tax, both have to be added back. I'm putting as total 80,000. So both to be added back. Both are not allowed as reduction. Donation, not allowed as reduction. Anything which is supposed to be related to business only will be allowed as reduction. Advertisement with political party, not allowed as reduction. That also to be added back. 37, 2B. Advertisement with any political party, no. That is also not allowed as reduction. After all these adjustments from the face of it, additional information is given that depreciation as per income tax is 50,000. So deduct that 50,000. Now find out the correct answer. 1 crore, 4 lakhs. Minus one lakh plus one lakh plus one lakh sixty thousand plus twenty thousand plus eighty thousand plus fifty thousand. Hmm. What was the answer? Now I got another answer. One crore six lakh seventy thousand. How did you get that? One crore seven lakh ten thousand. How the others got different answers, I don't know. I mean, what was so complicated in that straight forward, every provision is known. One crore, seven lakhs, 10,000 looks correct answer. All others are wrong. Check your answers, where you went wrong. 
If you have any doubts, ask now where you went wrong. Is a place where you got it out naturally. Other, otherwise, where would you go wrong? Or you didn't apply the progen correctly. Everybody got it now? Question number four. Okay. <clears throat> then question number five is a, a separate uh, type of question where we have to use uh, direct method. We'll come to that later. We can do a couple of questions like that uh, later. Uh, now just let us quickly go through question number uh, six. This was a past examination question. Beta Limited is a manufacturing company which maintains uh, accounts under mercantile system. They have a choice, by the way. SCs can follow cash basis also, mercantile basis also. Usually those who prepare under mercantile basis, they will prepare what? p &L account and R actually, income and expenditure account. If it is like a business, p &L account. If it is a something like a a profession or a not-for-profit organization, they might prepare income and expenditure account. Doesn't matter, whatever the name called, the essence is same, that is accrual system or mercantile system. But those people who prepare the accounts on cash basis, they don't need these things. They need only receipts and payments account or simply cash book, whatever it is, receipts and payments, inflows and outflows. So whatever we are discussing so far, what we left here is different. Question number five is not p &L account, it is receipts and payments account. So this we have to do separately. And of course, logic is to be followed differently. That is direct method to be followed for solving that question. But all the other questions, normally what we have been looking at are using mercantile system. That is normal. Generally, that is what is used. There's normal practice. And the p &L account will show the balance, whatever the profit or loss is. So it's a company and it's a manufacturing company. That is an important word. Uh, disclosed a profit of 12.5 lakhs for the year ending 31st March 21. You are required to compute the taxable income of the company for the assessment year 21-22 after considering the following information, duly explaining the reason for each item of adjustment. So naturally, first of all, what is the profit as per profit and loss account as given in the question? Starting point, 12 lakhs 50,000. That is given in the question. That is the starting point, 12.5 lakhs. 12 lakhs 50,000. I would suggest for anything in lakhs, write the full amounts rather than writing decimals. That is easier. Then one by one, let us look at uh, the adjustments to be done if required. Advertisement expenditure includes a sum of 60,000 rupees paid in cash to director of a sister concern and the market value of which is 52,000. First of all, market value of that is a <coughs> 52,000, wherein 48.2, first we'll apply, 48.2 first applies, and uh, diesel events under 482 is 8,000. That is the first thing to be applied. Then 483 comes. 483 comes. How much diesel events will be there? That will be 52,000. Total diesel events is 60,000. Why total diesel events is 60,000? Since the amount is paid in cash. But the entire 60,000 will not be under 483. Out of that, 8,000, difference between 60 and 52 is 48.2. And uh, this 52,000 will be under 48.3. So those are both disallowed. Finally, added to the net profit as per p and Second point, repairs of plant and machinery include 1.8 lakhs rupees towards replacement of worn out parts of machineries. So what do you say? Capital expenditure or revenue expenditure? Replacement of worn out parts of machineries. Old parts naturally have to be replaced after some usage. They are being replaced now with 1.8 lakhs and they are calling it as repairs, which was already debited to pay under. So is it a capital expenditure or revenue expenditure? Capital, capital, capital. 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 Okay. okay. All saying capital expenditure. <coughs> All wrong. That is a revenue expenditure. What is the difference between a capital expenditure and revenue expenditure? First of all, at a conceptual level, it should be clear. Law again doesn't tell that. Courts will decide. 
So I will not talk about what is capital, what is revenue. It is common sense and accounting knowledge. Capital expenditure is that which enhances the utility and value of any asset. Revenue expenditure is that which maintains the utility of any particular asset. For a simple understanding purposes, these are the words we can use to understand what is a capital expenditure and what is a revenue expenditure. Capital expenditure will enhance the value of an asset, whereas revenue expenditure maintains the value of the asset as it is for its working. Now, for example, if uh, a car is there, all the tires have become old, the tires are now changed. Do you say it is a capital expenditure or a revenue expenditure? Car tires. So changing the tires of the car, which became old, will it become capital expenditure? Or is it revenue expenditure? It is revenue expenditure. Same thing you know, here also. How can you say capital expenditure? This one, repairs of planted machinery, which are towards the replacement of the worn out parts of machineries. Once some of the parts of the machineries are worn out, in the sense, became old, now they will not work anymore if they are continued to be used. Now what is happening? The company is replacing them. So is it going to enhance the value of the machinery? No, nothing. It is not adding any extra parts to the machinery. Existing parts are only just getting replaced. So this, whatever happened, will only maintain the usefulness of the machine. It is not enhancing the usefulness of the machine. It is not enhancing the value of the machine. So the replacement of the worn out parts of the machines is not a capital expenditure. It is a revenue expenditure, which means it is allowed as reduction. So what should we do here? Add or deduct. One point eight lakhs. Add or deduct. Only one answer I got. Okay, people are telling deduct, deduct, add, okay. Okay, add, add, deduct. <laughs> add, 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 deduct. Again, all are wrong. What are you doing? What happened? What is there to do in this? What we have to do here is nothing. You should neither add nor deduct. Nothing to do. Not required to do anything. Why? Because already these things are taken into consideration as revenue expenditure, which was a repairs expenditure, already debited to PNL. After that, only 12.5 lakhs profit has come. Now, what is there specially to do? If it is disallowed, then we will add. If it is something which was not debited to PNL, probably then we will deduct, but nothing is there. So, 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 clearly, it is given that particularly this profit has been already calculated. And naturally, that would be after all these items being treated. Otherwise, why these items are given unnecessary. So it is a revenue expenditure, allowed as reduction. We don't need to do anything. It's already debited to be under. Whatever the profit of 12.5 lakhs is, that is after deducting that only. So nothing specially to deduct anything now. So understand the concepts clearly, very important things. That's what I told. PGBP is a logical chapter, not only provisions based. Provisions are important. Of course, without them, nothing can be done. Logic will not save us in law. But Beyond the provisions, logic is also important. The, from the text that is given in the question, from the sentences which are framed, we should understand what happened and what should be the treatment. That, that ability is also required for particularly PGBP and capital gains, most importantly for PGBP. Now, third point, a sum of 6,000 on account of liability foregone by a creditor has been taken to general reserve. The same was charged to the revenue account in earlier year, some time back. See, again, we don't need this particular section. There is a section called section 41. We'll see that later also, but we don't need that common sense. So far, how many times we have seen this? Any amount which is earlier debited to PNL, if at all any reversal happens now, what should be the treatment of that? 
earlier debited to payable means earlier claimed as reduction now what it will happen if any reversal is there simply that becomes taxable as simple as that so here when there is a liability foregone by creditor sum of 6000 rupees is a liability foregone by creditor means creditor means what somebody from whom we purchased the goods in other words earlier we would have debited the trading account and payable account with purchases of this 6000 now that is not there because that creditor said okay okay forget about it you don't have to give me any money there is a liability foregone by the creditor so is it a benefit for us or not definitely yes definitely yes earlier when this happened charged means debited debited to revenue account earlier whatever year it is 15 16 now once that reversal happened it is credited to general reserve is it a correct treatment can this be treated as general reserve this gain no it cannot be treated as general reserve it becomes a, a normal income so it is deemed income actually as part of our section 41 doesn't matter we don't need to know that of course anyway we will know that in the next class but in without knowing that also common sense is enough any amount of expenditure earlier claimed as deduction and any reversal on that happens now that amount will be taxable this we have seen in the electricity companies case also uh, depreciation earlier charged now sold naturally to the extent of the depreciation that was claimed earlier now becomes taxable under pgbp as balancing charge same logic recovery of bad debts also same logic scientific research assets claimed as deduction earlier later sold so whatever the amount of uh, sale proceeds are that will be taxable under pgbp of course if there is any amount over and above the cost of the asset that will be taxable as capital gains same logic so logic is same when any debit happened earlier on which you claimed a deduction earlier now that situation is reversed automatically that becomes taxable so this 6000 becomes taxable what they did by transferring to general reserve is not correct so once it is something which was not already included in the pnl but it becomes taxable means it should be added income not credited to pnl but still it is taxable under income tax act so that is uh, 6000 rupees point number 3 point number 4 sale proceeds of import and trade elements amounting to 1 lakh has been credited to pnl which the company claims as capital receipt not chargeable to income tax point number 4 tell me add deduct sale proceeds of import and trade element amounting to 1 lakh has been taken credited to pnl account but the company says that it is a capital receipt not chargeable to income tax add deduct i don't want other words diplomatic words i don't need add deduct or nothing both are there three are there add deduct nothing add deduct nothing your answer should be one of them nothing nothing to be done why already they created to pay andal and they already created to pay andal what is there to do but they did a right job they are contending it is a capital receipt andal what do they contend what do they talk what do they think what do they dream we don't care what they have done that matters what do they talk what do they think who cares doesn't matter they created to pay andal which is a correct thing to do fine it is taxable important entitlements is taxable under pgbp so they have created to pay andal which is fantastic after that whatever the other things are mentioned those are all useless so whatever is supposed to be done they already did nothing to be adjusted there then point number 5 <clears throat> being also engaged in the biotechnology business the company incurred the following expenditure on in house research and development as approved by the prescribed authority research equipment purchased 150000 remuneration paid to scientists so this is a capital expenditure this is a revenue expenditure total amount of 2 lakhs rupees is debited to the p and l account same question add deduct nothing 2 lakhs Add deduct nothing, nothing, nothing. Why? Because we know that, particularly for even biotechnology business, also any business, also in-house capital expenditure and in-house revenue expenditure completely is allowed as deduction under thirty-five. So, what they did is correct. They debited to pay under accounting-wise, it may be wrong because this is a capital expenditure, but tax-wise, nothing wrong. tax wise perfect so nothing to be done there so that's all simply what is the income of this company now pgbp income of the company 1250000 plus 8000 plus 52000 plus 6000 what is the total 
13 lakhs 16000 that's it that is the answer for uh, this question number 6 <clears throat> so what is to be de dealt with and treated is one part what is to be left is also very important in the exams what is to be left that has to be written definitely with a note we cannot just say nothing 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 there you have to write a note why nothing why no why no treatment or any adjustment why no adjustment is required you should write that as a working note but here just for computation purposes we have added only things which are supposed to be added total came to 13 lakh 16 thousand that's it now question number seven ramji limited engaged in the manufacture of medicines manufacture whatever pharmaceuticals furnishes the following information for the year ended and state the reasons whether the amounts are taxable or deductible uh, computation of total income not required these are the places our students will show off unnecessary things this was exam question by the way and some people will start trying computing something and come total income and all that they will get uh, definitely a bad impression particularly when it is given that computation of income is not required if you still compute and show off that yes i am doing and i am defying your instructions uh, nobody will accept that so not required means not required you don't need to do that it's a theory question state is the question not compute and very clearly computation is not required also is given because they know some people will uh, do that and some people will do that so mechanically without even observing that this question never had any first of all what is profit as per p and l account also the starting point itself is not there what how what will compute what will be the computation that you will do nothing so be clear with the concepts without any amount of p and l profit or loss we cannot do any computation of pgbp not possible these are only just items which we have to tell deductible not deductible taxable not taxable that's all look at one by one municipal tax relating to the office building 51000 rupees not paid till 30th september 21 of course as i said for companies 30th september is due date for filing the written of income it is not paid till the due date for filing the written of income so question deductible not deductible no other words to be used whatever is asked that only has to be taken yeah somebody has raised the hand uh, you can ask the question i'm hearing Principal tax not deductible. So the answer should be not deductible. Okay, by mistake, and that's all. Next, uh, second point patent acquired for 20 lakhs rupees on 1 9 2020 and used the, from the same month. So patent is an intangible asset. And 1 9 2020 means uh, definitely it is put to use for more than 180 days. So 20 lakhs into what will be the amount of deduction and what, under what section and amount? All of them have to be written. What is the percentage of depreciation on the patents? Or for that matter, any intangible assets? Percentage of depreciation. Under section 32, 25%. So 25% of 20 lakhs means 5 lakhs is deductible under section 32. That is the amount, final answer. 5 lakhs rupees to be deducted. 25% is the rate of depreciation. Third point, capital expenditure on scientific research 10 lakhs rupees, which includes cost of land 2 lakhs. Cost of land never will be allowed as reduction. So how much will be allowed as reduction? Only 8 lakhs will be allowed as reduction. That is answer for point number 3. Additional depreciation also can be there if it is uh, there. But additional depreciation, somebody is asking about patent. Is patent available for additional depreciation? It's not machinery. Patent is not eligible for additional depreciation. It is machinery. Of course, it is a manufacturing business, but additional depreciation is not available for intangible assets or for that matter, any other assets like buildings, furniture also. Only for planned and machinery, the two which are installed in the factory additional depreciation will be available so not eligible for additional depreciation clearly next amount due from customer x outstanding for more than three years written off as bad debt in the books of five lakhs is that allowed as reduction of course yes no problem it was already there in the books it is written off in the books it is allowed as reduction it is real so five lakhs allowed as reduction enter amount 
Point number five, income tax paid 90,000 by the company in respect of non-monetary perquisites provided to its employees. No, not allowed as deduction. Since it's the same thing is exempt for the employees on the other side under section 1010 CC. Tax paid by the company on behalf of employees in relation to their non-monetary perquisites is not allowed as deduction, not allowed. Sixth point says provident fund contribution 5 lakhs 50,000 remitted in July 2021. No problem. That is allowed as deduction provident fund contribution. Unless otherwise stated, it is employer's contribution only and it is uh, transferred, remitted within the due date for filing the return of income. Hence, entire amount is allowed as deduction. Seventh point says expenditure towards advertisement in a souvenir of a political party not allowed as deduction. Very particularly, there is a, a section there. What is the section for that? 37. To be that is uh, advertisement in souvenir of political party disallowed. Then eighth point says refund of GST seventy five thousand received during the year which was claimed as expenditure in an earlier year. Now tell me what about this point number eight? Refund of GST seventy five thousand received now which was earlier claimed as expenditure. Now what it is taxable deductible. One of the answers should be taxable. First of all, you should understand the nature of the item. All other items are expenses. All of them are expenses. So we said deductible, not deductible, deductible, not deductible. If deductible, how much? All these things were earlier. But this point is related to an income. It is a refund of GST. It's an income. So it is taxable. That is why this question also said that discuss the taxability or deductibility. Both are not same. Deductibility will be in the form of uh, in relation to the expenses. Taxability will be in relation to incomes. Both are not same. Completely different. If you use uh, different words interchangeably, automatically that will get a very, very bad impression and very bad marks also. So clarity of words is also equally important. That was question number seven. Now question number eight. Tell me the answer. I asked you to do that. At least this one I want consistent answers. Question number eight, please. Answers. Again changed. Hmm. A lot of people are having a 10,000 rupees difference, 253450, 243450. 253243. What is the difference? 10,000. Why it will come? Okay. People have provided depreciation on the buildings, uh, this one lakh, toilet roof. Did you provide for depreciation on this one lakh? Yes, building, no, it is capital expenditure. Should be first diesel load, then provide a depreciation, right? Yes, 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 all wrong. What is the question saying? Ignoring depreciation, you don't read that. You have to read the question. You cannot jump to answer the question and say that you got the wrong answer. You'll get zero marks for that unnecessarily, no? Final answer is wrong. Of course, steps by some marks we may get. So. Question said very clearly, ignoring depreciation. So ignore depreciation. So now tell me, those who did not deduct the depreciation, what is your answer? I'm sure it should be 253450. 253450, is it? That should be ideally the correct answer. Because those who debited, uh, sorry, reduced the depreciation would have got 243450. Majorly the difference was that. So 253450 is the final answer. Those who got different answers, check that why you got different answers. And if you have any questions there, you can ask me. There is nothing in this. IT refund uh, 8100 will not be taxable. Definitely it has to be reduced from the net profit. Interest on fixed deposits is taxable, but not here. So it has to be also reduced. Amount paid to IIT Mumbai is no problem. It is allowable as reduction. Interest traveling is allowed as reduction. Repairs has to be added back. 
interest payments includes 50,000 on which TDS has not been deducted as penalty and penalty for contravention of GST 24,000. So 50,000 on which TDS has not been deducted. How much will be disallowed? Only 30% will be disallowed. So 15,000 should be added back. Entire 50,000 should not be disallowed. So it is uh, not mentioned it is paid outside India and all. So don't assume that it would have been paid outside India. It would have been paid in Mars and all that. If nothing is mentioned. Everything happens in India only. So 50,000 will not be disallowed. 15,000 only will be disallowed. Penalty, of course, will be disallowed. That's all. So final answer should be 253450. So 93950 minus 8,100 minus 6,400 plus 1 lakh plus 15,000 plus 24,000. It is coming to eighteen eight two two lakhs eighteen thousand four fifty. How did you get two five three four fifty? Now that thirty five thousand, everybody is allowed fifty thousand, huh? Added entire 50,000. No, why? Interest is only 50,000 on which TDS has not been deducted. So why you added 50,000? No. Should add only 15,000. So now the correct answer is not that. See, that's what happens when you go with more people. Even that can be wrong. So final answer now, correct answer is 2 lakhs 18,450. It is not mentioned that this interest payment on which TDS is not deducted is outside India. You cannot assume that it is paid outside India. Somewhere in America, somewhere in Mars. No, that is not a correct assumption. That is not valid assumption, normally speaking. So 15,000 only should be disallowed, not 50,000. That's it. The correct answer 218450. That is question number eight. So that uh, concludes our uh, session today. And uh, in the next session, we'll uh, continue this discussion. Uh, most of the problems related to PGPP we already have done. Only one model, if at all we call it a model, like direct method related questions, a couple of them can be solved. And uh, also the remaining provisions 44 series can be discussed in the next session. Any other questions you can ask now, otherwise we'll conclude. Okay, thank you. Bye.